This podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Listen to other great tech podcasts at www.techpodcasts.com. Yo, you are in the right place at the right time, listening to the right thing. Tech Webcast. Congratulations on choosing such an awesome thing to listen to. You are clearly very smart. You're into tech stuff. You love hearing Brad and Jason and their guests chat. And you're probably really good looking too. Well done. So let's get into it. The weekly tech extravaganza that is Tech Webcast in three, two, one. Let's go! <coughs> Welcome to the... Welcome to the uh, episode 196 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on Saturday the 7th of July, 2012. Tech Webcast is recorded every Sunday and rebroadcast on Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. And our uh, usual hosts are Brad, Jody, and Steve. Hey, Steve. Welcome back, mate. How you been? Uh, a bit busy, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Okay, you meant to say Saturday. You said Sunday. Uh, Jody, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? I got a new dog. Yay. Yay. Brugger. <laughs> What's up with you? Welcome to the new ha- household of Jody Rains. Oh, I'm sure he appreciates that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, we've, uh, I've been chatting with Vox for the past couple of days and uh, yeah, it's been good. Good fun. Uh, I know. Um, big yeah. fan of Voxer too. They, they do Voxer. a good job. Yeah. They, yeah. they love us. Um, there's been an error, with, an error with Voxer for the past week. And uh, we've been helping them to fix it, and they have fixed it, so that's good. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, good, good stuff. What's been happening with you, Jody? Any cool things? Um, just uh, dog training for the most part. Um, been busy. We went to a restaurant opening tonight, which was kind of cool. Oh, nice. And, uh, you know, um, some interesting stuff um, in the news this week in social media, which I'm sure we'll get to in a little bit. Sure. And, Steve, you've been on a boat. Um, thing, haven't you? Shoot, yeah, okay. for a couple of days now, it seems. Uh, of course, I was filming the uh, uh, the Columbus ship update video, and I actually spent the 4th of July on the uh, wooden sailing ship. Oh, nice. Good stuff. How cool is that? Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Tied Tell us pier. about it. How, how was it? Tell us about it. It was awesome. I mean, uh, I've been keeping up regular updates on uh, they're actually re- for restoring it, and uh, Initially, like two weeks ago, you know, it's it didn't look like it. They, it was changed, but then two weeks later, oh my gosh, it looks like they redid everything. And because they, uh, they were actually doing a uh, family reunion, uh, the Nino family, who um, ancestor uh, is actually the builder of the original uh, Nina Columbus ship. Cool, interesting. And um, yeah, I've seen your video of it today. You look, look, look pretty good. You you should be a newsman. And work with the news. Nah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't want me. Really? No, I'm just I'm just kidding. Who was nice. doing the camera work? Um, actually, it's one of the members uh, of the of the uh, Sailor Columbus Sailors Association. He he did an excellent job. Actually, yeah, he did. Yeah, I want to hire did. him. Yeah, good stuff. Free good Pepsis. Stuff. Yeah, free uh, Pepsis and that sort of good stuff. Um. All right, what else has been happening? Um, Jody, the news, we'll get to the news, and also we're going to talk to Sol about uh, Right Tag. Welcome, Sol, to the Tech Webcast. Thank you. All right, we'll have a chat to you in a minute. Um, Jody, we've got some news. Okay, well, we've got some interesting stories this week. We um, first, first story has to do with, um, hold on, let me get into it. Um, the boycott, uh, boycott Apple hashtag, painting a target in the wrong place. So apparently uh, there's a lot of, noise again about boycotting Apple. Over the last year, there's been a truly impressive surge of large groups in action on the internet. And these users have found out that they can use the web and various social networks to affect change in one way or another. And um, the events are usually st- uh, excuse me, spawned by some communal desire to see change. And um, sometimes they're propelled by the wrong motives. So there's a lot of people who are kind of upset by the recent decision to ban the Samsung Galaxy ne- ne- Nexus in the United States. 
The Nexus is not only a popular phone, but also a tactical vehicle with which Google plans to spread the latest version of their operating system. Um, and apparently, the reason that it's being banned has something to do with Apple. Have you guys seen the story? Yeah. Have you been watching the news? Yeah, I'm sort of getting sick of yeah. thought of Apple doing everyone. <clears throat> it's getting really annoying. What do you think, Steve? Um, initially, I kind of supported them, but it does seem to get uh, a bit out of hand. Yeah, because it does. I I do know you know a lot of companies tend well. I know Samsung does have a history of it before be, before them even necessarily copying um, like the Apple iPhone or iPad or anything. But yeah. but yeah, it is getting a, quite a bit uh, out of control. I think. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not just Apple. Um, because Google and Motorola is suing Microsoft in another case, and they, they said that, that could result in a ban of the Xbox 360. Yeah, that, that, that never happened, though, did it? Well, it's, it's happening now. Oh, okay. So, well, I'm, I'm curious, Saul, what do you think? I haven't been following that. Busy with my own thing, but I see it in, um, in tags, actually, though. Actually, right now, I'm looking at Boycott Apple, um, as two words and one word, and, and I'm finding um, interesting uh, related stuff. Some of them are profanities I won't share. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, but, for example, pat patent reform now is a tag. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, my thing is kind of useful also for discovery. Useful for tagging your stuff. Right, well, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. Yeah. So, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Any more? What, what else, Jody? What else has been? Yeah, sure. Well, um, okay. So, talking about marketing and what's happening with mobile, there's a majority of marketers who plan to increase their mobile budgets in 2013. Apparently, a new study found that 70% of marketers plan to increase their budgets for mobile in 2013. The question is whether it's really necessary. Um, this year, mobile ad spending in the U.S. is expected to reach $2.6 billion, and this includes spending on display, search, and messaging-based formats. Another estimate shows mobile advertising on smartphones will be at about five, over $5 billion um, as an industry by 2015. So really, the, the biggest error that brands make as they venture into mobile is that they think mobile is the same thing that they're doing on their website, just down to a four-inch form. But um, the reality is that it's a lot more than that. Mobile users aren't tethered to, to a desktop. They need timely information. Um, they need information to drive them into stores with a positive purchase intent. And not all companies are moving forward with, with apps. I know personally, I've had some uh, dilemmas with the mobile side of uh, the way some companies are marketing. For example, um, if you go to the jeep.com website, I was looking to purchase a Jeep. And um, the mobile application was, when I say heinous, that's an understatement. And I don't know if you guys have had um, similar experiences where, I mean, a big brand that you expect would know better is not doing a great job with the, the mobile application. Mm. What, what do you think, um, Brad? Have you seen that also? Um, no, not really. No? You think the brands do a good job with their mobile applications? Um, uh, I'm not sure. I can't have no comment. Um, I sort of got distracted. I've, I've got a. Okay. For some of us, it's an afterthought. <laughs> you know, as Brad brought up to me, that it's for some of us, it is an afterthought. And but I respect what Jody's saying. If it's yeah. a major brand, then for God's sakes, throw a little money at the situation, and yeah, mm. and and make it mobile friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, especially for shopping and 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 location based businesses that are brick and mortar. I mean, for for goodness sakes, if you're not linked to some kind of a, a mapping software, you're really missing the boat. In my in my humble opinion. Yeah. Steve, what were you going to say? I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, I think yeah, major brands and, and manufacturers, whatever, they do need to have a well developed app if they're going to put it on mobile devices because, you know. If they put it out, it sucks. And are people ever going to download it, re-download it again? Once they'll just delete it and you know say it just sucks, and you know they'll never use it again. And even if if they prove it where it's actually you know usable. Well, the bottom line is that if brands don't get savvy, they're going to alienate their audiences. Um, and in another story, um, talking about alienating audi audiences, there's going to be a lot of mm -hmm. alienated people on Monday. 
Um, apparently, the internet may not work on Monday, and the question is, um, apparently there's a DNS changer that's been out there, and the federal government, the FBI, has had websites that were set up, so they would, um, I guess the, the DNS changer that was going to a bad address was being directed to these FBI websites. Well, the FBI shutting down the domains that had been affected by the DNS changer malware. And um, apparently it's been circulating on the web as far back as 2007. The Trojans creators, six Estonian nationals, shut down their services when they were caught and they were arrested about eight months ago. So although the FBI has been urging consumers for months to check if their systems have been affected by the DNS changer, about 275,000 computers are still at risk of not having the Internet access on Monday. So there is some good news. Um, it's apparently not that difficult to check and see if your system has been infect infected and then fix it if needed. Uh, the DNS Changer Working Group launched a check tool, and if you click on that check tool, it'll give you a box green if you're okay and red if you're not okay, and we'll put that link in the show notes. So, guys, have you checked your computers? Yeah, I did, I did mine yesterday. I'm all green, so I'm all I'm okay. Um, I admit yeah, I haven't really checked and I, I know this is actually this has been going out for, you know, at least six months. They've been saying this, so um, I, you know, and I just read it yesterday too. So I do need to check, or uh, I may be going off the air <laughs> here soon. Well, you better check. It'd be only for one day, mate. We won't be for the whole week. Yeah, I know. One day. Yeah. If, it, if you go off the internet, but you probably won't. But um, yeah. What about you? Scott? Then, What's your view on this? Sorry. Eddie. Well, when, when Jody was talking about the 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 uh, dire lack of of good um, uh, sites optimized for mobile, what I thought of is is it, do you know any any of you heard of the term responsive design? Yes. Response. Yeah. Okay. Responsive design. So it's about um, uh, the the site sensing what kind of uh, device you're looking at it on, and then optimizing itself to fit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I searched that with right tag, and I was looking at just um, uh, related tags and and what kind of chatter is going on about it. So, um, for example, I found right at the top um, under responsive design tag um, this tweet. Uh, where, where is the Skype box? Here we go. Um, this is an actual tweet uh, comes out at the. Um, uh, top result. So you see, um, you see what people are saying um, on the topic. Uh, um, you see what it's related to. It's a user experience issue, um, and it's it's a matter of smoothing that out for us, so we don't have to tick boxes, uh, telling we don't have to know, to to tell the site what we're using it on, right? What we're view, excuse me viewing it on. It's better if it senses. So. Um, uh, this is an emerging technology. This is something that very few brands are, are, are using still. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and speaking of emerging technologies, <laughs> we're going to segue from one story to the next, right? Uh, so, um, mm -hmm. apparently there's a big difference, um, a battle of the sexes on social media. So, oh, yeah. um, yeah, <laughs> women win on Facebook, Twitter, and Zynga, and men get LinkedIn and Reddit. And um, it's kind of interesting. Online gaming, which was once uh, once it only belonged to men, has fallen to the females as well. Zynga mm. is the largest online gaming network with 250 million players logging in on every uh, logging on every month. And you'll, you're going to. I don't know if you'll believe this or not, but 60% of those players are women, and they're mostly women who are over 55. Oh, my God. Is that crazy? Mm. I know. It's very and, crazy. And Do you play a game show? Do you play games with your computer? Me? Yeah. No. I don't waste my time with it. <laughs> Actually, Jody. Neither do um, I. What about you? No games. You play games? No games. No, I don't believe No you. games. I do find, though, I also, the, the old joke used to be with Pinterest. Right. If you want to mm -hmm. win at Pinterest... Uh, uh, topless male models, kitty cats, and recipes, and you'll be at the top of the heap because Pinterest certainly up until recently used to be something like 90% women. Yeah. 
What about you, Steve? What about you? What's your view on this story? Um, it's, it's amazing because Jody just mentioned, you know, about online gaming that women yep. are the t top results. And this is actually going back quite a ways because I have seen this one study that said um, the majority of women uh, are online gamers compared to men. And mm. you really got to think, of course, mm. we're not talking about first person shooters or World of Warcraft necessarily, <laughs> but it could be... Right. Um, you know, Farmville or Zombie Farmville, you know, on Facebook or the Java games or, you know, crossword puzzles, who knows, online. So, yeah, it's uh, really remarkable. Yep. Interesting. All right. What's, uh, I don't get that. I don't get, I don't get the Farmville thing. I really I, don't. <laughs> I play food all. People can request to play games. I don't, I'm not into it. I don't play it. I play Xbox. Um, so, yeah. What else, Jay? Anything else? Um, there's one more story um, that has to do with Internet access as a human right. Can you imagine? I mean, you think about Internet access, you know, but you guys are, are pretty young. Maybe maybe it doesn't like you kind of grew up more in the Internet generation. But for me, the Internet is relatively like kind of new. Um, yep. But the concept was first. I'm old. Was that so? <laughs> I said, me too. I'm old, too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're old yeah. souls. We've been around. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but you know, it's kind of interesting when you think, I mean, is the Internet a human right? Um, there's a um, – the United Nations Human Rights Council unanimously backed the notion in a resolution passed on Thursday. And the resolution says that all people should be allowed to connect to and express themselves freely on the Internet. All 47 members of the Human Rights Council, including notoriously censorship-prone countries such as China and Cuba, signed the resolution. Hmm. So, kind of an interesting uh, twist of events there. Um, internet access as a human right has been supported by several of the Internet's most well-known proponents, including Tim Berners-Lee, who was the inventor of the World Wide Web. Um, so, it's, it's just kind of like an interesting concept that it's a human right. Well, hmm. well Jody, what do you think? Jody, uh, you, uh, I totally agree with that. I'm going to tell you why, because uh, nearly everything... You, you, you do now it seems you got to do it on the internet because like if you uh, go for a, a job with a um, major retailer they do most of their applications online um, banking and you know merit is stuff that now you got to do it online so it might have to be a human rights because it's really hard to function without it uh, nowadays mm. yeah even uh, mm. watching TV online now has got popular you know Watching TV and watching TV shows, we've got Hulu Plus and that sort of stuff, and yeah, everyone's. Moving. But it's a human right. I mean, it's not. It's not. Um, you're not uh, forced to use the internet. What's that? You're not forced to use the internet. Hmm? You don't have to use the internet if you don't want to. No, you're not forced to use it, but but it's your right. Yeah. Freedom if you of deprive expression. Deprive people of information. No, um, they're just going to be always held back. They're just always going to be at a handicap. We'd agree on that, right? You know? Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, if they, if they don't have access to the same information that we do, if they don't have access to the internet, then they're just always going to be behind. They're always handicapped. Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And, and you think about um, the way that um, some of the countries, um, like Iran, um, when they were going through the political unrest, um, they, they basically boycotted the ability to communicate and the, abil the ability to utilize the Internet. And the information that we were getting um, at a high level was coming through social media. So, um, you know, you think about Internet access, the amount of information that comes up from the masses, you know, um, it's just kind of, I don't know, like mind blowing almost when you think about it. But um, I, I go back to the analogy of um, when Kennedy was killed and we have the Magruder film and a, a couple of videos that uh, from different angles, you know, camera pictures. And you think about the plethora of people now, if this happened today and all the people that would be videotaping and filming with their iPhones and their, their mm -hmm. Androids and, and, I mean, there'd be no question what happened. Yeah. So on it the just grassy changes knoll. the complexion of how we get information. Yeah, on that grassy right. knoll. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, so, Jody, is that it? Is that all news you want to talk about? That's all the news I have for you today. Uh, <laughs> I said hi. He's looking at that dog. 
Um, so, um, so we got Sol from Right Tag. Yes. What's up, Sol? That's a uh, good name. Busy with it. Busy growing it out. We do all we are is off to a, to a start. We think. What is? Um, uh, tell us about Right Tag from the from the beginning. Tell us how it got started and what you, how you use it and that sort of stuff. It came from the idea came to me from the big Japan earthquake um, about 16 months ago. Uh, I found people, the best information was on Twitter rather than TV. Um, and people who seemed to know a whole lot were tagging all over the place. Uh, they, were, they were sharing great um, videos, information, updates, aftershock stuff. But the tags were just, uh, they were just all, there was JP Quake, Love for Japan, Save Japan, Fukushima, Miyagi, um, uh, J Quake. So what, what I saw in this is people don't know how to tag their stuff. They're just guessing. On the other hand, if they all use the same, like the right tag, the right tag, and we would all just follow that one, and we would see um, what we need to see. So I thought, what about a tool where uh, you don't know the tag yet, but you know what you're talking about? Well, yeah, you could give us one word or a couple words, or you could already know a tag and we'll tell you related tags and give you stats on it. We'll show you when it's used, who used it, and the content that they're using it with. Um, and that was just for Twitter. The first iteration was something called Tag Bag. Bag because you could save um, collections of tags and, and data around them, uh, to put it quickly. Um, then with Right Tag, we thought, well, what, just Twitter? What about if if this the, the um, tag suggestions people would want for sharing stuff on lots of networks? Even better yet, places where they sell stuff. If they understood that tag your stuff, people who follow those tags or those topics um, will find your content, even if they don't already know you, you're going to sell more. We think that's big. So um, that's the concept. Maximize reach with the right tags for each network. More reach with relevancy. And the relevancy you get from looking at those content tabs that you see on the right side. Okay, so you can click on it. When you get your tag results, you can click on one of them. And then you can see the when, the who, and the what yep. content went with the tag. Um, to, to understand if it's right for your content. Good stuff. Um, Good stuff. That's that's the backstory. Cool. And you got four people working for you? Uh, we for have you? one employee, three, um, uh, and I am one of three partners. Okay. All right. And the other three dudes are in Prague, Czech Republic. Nice. Yeah. When you if you ever reach out to them, pre please call them Czechoslovakians. Okay. They enjoy that. Okay. There, there's no such country anymore. Uh, All right. So, okay, I'm um, sure Jody's got some questions for you, so. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Jody. No, I think it's a, an interesting concept. Um, and I know that I've had situations where I haven't uh, been able to determine what the um, official tag is. Is there any correlation between, um, let's say, like an official tag and just a tags that have become popular? I mean, how do you figure out which tag? Would be question. the right tag. Um, a, by looking at the, you, you want to look at the content material. Good example for you is my name, Saul. Okay. In some cases, like for a tweet chat, right, like tools chat or us guys, it pretty much means one thing. It's about a certain Twitter chat. And if you jump on it, if you use that tag and you're not talking about it, you will get, um, well, you'll get some nasty tweets at you for misusing it. On the other hand, my name, Saul. Uh, people use it to refer to a number of soccer players. Uh, Portuguese and Spanish, Saul, seems to be more popular in Spanish and Portuguese than English. It mm -hmm. also it refers to Guns N' Roses. Because Slash, his real name is Saul. The, okay. You know, the... 
lead guitarist of Guns N' yeah. Roses slash, right? Yeah. So um, in, in some cases, a tag actually is about one thing. In other cases, it's used by a number of different groups to mean different things. Um, as for deciding whether you should use it or not, with right tag, you get a ranking of the tags. They're ranked by reach. How many people are going to see it if you use okay. that? The top is at the top. But then for relevancy, you, if you want, you click on them. And then on the side, on the right side, you see um, the when, the who's using them, using a tag, and then content examples. So you see what kind of content is, people are, are sharing with a tag. This gives you some kind of hint as to whether it's relevant for your thing. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, Steve, any questions for Saul? Actually, it's not more really a question. It's more of a statement. Um, Go ahead. Mm. And uh, I admit for myself, I, I don't. And uh, let me switch the views here. I, I, you know, I don't really know much about tags, you know, hashtags on Twitter. I just use them and that's it. Um, I think this is a wonderful way of linking everything together. Uh, obviously, Twitter and the different accounts. I just used um, Twitter and Google Plus, and uh, and I, you know, I don't even know how to use tags to really search for other things. So this would be a really uh, useful thing for uh, to use. Well, the great thing about that, thank you. The great thing is, none of us know how other people are searching them, and they're. In, I mean, the the easiest example I can give you for how your stuff is going to get found if you use tags well is perhaps. Um, some of you are familiar with, say, Radiant 6, TweetDeck, Hootsuite, Tweet Smarter, Social Oomph, any of these things that give you columns, where you've either Twitter co clients, where people can follow a tag. See, when that, when that, at the time of the Big Japan earthquake, I would have followed JP Quake. Okay? And so I would have seen all these tweets that people were sharing, even if I'm not following the person. Right. Of course, with Facebook, you can't do that. This is why Facebook is glaringly missing in right tag. There's no tagging in Facebook. There's also no way to search for content other than from people you follow, that you, you, people you friended or that you're in a group with. Other than that, you can't search for things. So basically, your stuff is going to get found and from tons of different ways. It's not just a matter of people using the search box within a network it's your stuff is going to get out there if you use tags in some cases it means actually selling more so this is why we put a lot of time into it because if we can help people reach those who want their stuff mm. but don't already know them by name right then this is power all right well how do, uh, how do i know brad quick one how do i know brad because I had, because he, I, I was searching um, podcasters, and I found him that way. Oh well, I was didn't I, know was him the, by was name. I, was the first name? Well, was I was 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 it the first one or what? I'm, I'm afraid I cannot tell you whether it was the first or the last. It's been a while since I've known you, Brad. Okay, <laughs> okay. Right. but this is how I found you. So I didn't know you Stop. by name. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, someone else actually found me on tw on Twitter, on um, Google, on Twitter as well. My blog. I got an email from Sony yesterday. They're going to send me five fifty dollars vouchers to give away on Tech webcast. That's another story. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, but that's something for you. Some uh, Australia only, unfortunately. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's good, Sol. That's good. That's uh, you found, that's that's good that you found my podcast, there, mate. Thank you. Um, so, so out of curiosity, um, are you monetizing it at all? Are you making anything from? Oh yeah. Oh, not yet. Uh, it's in the plans. There's a number of things that need to be integrated. Some of these networks won't be free. Also, all of these searches that you do are rather costly API calls. So we can't keep it free. It's going to be a matter of people so are going to have the, a budget. What's the cost going to be, mate, when you price this up? Uh, it'll be a matter of rights. Rights will be the virtual currency, and you pay so much money for so many rights. And when you do, I mean, when you're doing a search, if you have one network selected, that'll cost less. If you have several networks selected, 
it costs us more, so it costs you more. So what's the rough sort of profit a monthly? Ten bucks a month, or what would be more? We've, we have no idea. It's extremely complex because all of these networks charge different prices. For example, Twitter, thirteen thousand dollars a month. Wow. For Firehose access to their databases. Okay. So. So using an API, it's nothing like what you see with other sites where it's like sign in with Twitter, right? Or share this to Twitter. Yep. This is a totally different search. This is searching into their databases. Wow. Okay. And that's not free. All right. So yeah, can't What's answer that yet. What's the future of Right Tag? When, when, when is there more updates coming or when's the, when's the next update coming? Oh, uh, next week there'll be a couple more pages integrated. Um, we're always, for us, paramount is the search quality, the results we give you. Right. The relevancy is most important. So search algorithms always being improved. Also, speed is way up. You guys, none of you saw it in the beginning when searches took two to five minutes. Now they're, now they're like 10 to 30 seconds, which is a... People think it's slow, but it's a great improvement. So we're working on things like this, working on quality before we, wor we work on quantity um, and working on quality before we work on monetization. Cool. Any questions, Steve? Oh, no, I think that was it. Well, I have a question for you. So when, when are you going to come on to the iPhone and iPad and devices like that? <laughs> oh, that uh, that uh, no, be, I hope you live that long. <laughs> I hope I live that long. It's that far out in our priorities thing. Oh, really? Despite despite what I said about responsive design and yeah. you know and, and agreeing with Jody, you know, wholeheartedly about how major brands should do this. Um, it's so much work for so little reward that if it's a major brand, yes, because of the millions of, of users. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's still small, well, it's still small. So if we only have in the hundreds of users, the thousands of users, uh, first we'll, we'll work on getting it right for Macs and um, PCs, Good stuff. Uh, then for tablets, and then for smaller screens. Right. Yeah. What about plugins for browsers and stuff? Is that, is that coming anytime soon? Yeah, we want uh, no, no, no time soon, but it's in the plans that we want right tag to ride um, out there. In your in your browser, in bookmarklets, in browser plugins, so that you can tag um, smart tag without going to write tag, for sure. Good stuff, Jody. Any questions? Yeah. Um. So, just curiously, um, are you targeting the individual user or are you targeting um, corporate users? I mean, when you when you developed this, you must have had somebody in mind who would be um, really the customer for you. The, the, uh, our first testers are changing our opinion of that. Uh, so the first answer is we were thinking of the little guy, uh, individuals who want to tag their tweets and their eBay offers, the little guy. Thing is, though, is uh, having people test it. They say, you know, Saul, this is a social media listening tool. People are putting in their brand name in that search box, and they see what tags are going on around it. What are people saying? What are people tagging their brand with? So we know from this that um, as far as the bigger, a bigger leap for monetization, um, we have to add more in stats and functionality that will help um, the corporate user. So um, in just a few minutes, I can't give, I can't give the the dozens of things that we have planned, integrated, and the many things that users have suggested. Um, one huge one that, that none of us have mentioned is besides words and word strings and tags, what about people? People want to search people in right tag and find out what tags they're using and what tags are coming up in mentions of them. Yeah. Right, and we right. get stuff like that from the from the our first uh, our first uh, users because we listen, you know, good stuff, negative stuff. We we always listen, good and stuff. we appreciate it. All right, so so um, what else? So you can't announce anything else. It's just go to the website, sign up, and you can test it out and stuff. Yeah, please try it and let us know what we can do better and what you'd like in it. Cool. We're righttag dot com. All right. R i t e t a g. Have you had much public? Have you had much um, 
publication, like people talk about and stuff on websites? Publicity. Publicity, yeah, if that's, that's the word, JD. Thanks, mate. A few people, <laughs> few people have blogged on it. We're on Killer Startup. I was interviewed by KillerStartupSpot.com. Uh, um, and I'm, I keep myself available to major bloggers, minor bloggers. I do not uh, discriminate. Um, so as far as reaching out to the monster blogs, uh, Huffington post and such, um, we want to have more features, uh, already integrated. So before we reach out to them, cool, cool, that's, cool, cool. That's the plan. So, um, Saul, how can people find you if they're looking for you other than right tag.com? What, how can people connect with you? I'm Osaka Saul just about anywhere. Uh, Osaka, like the city in Japan. Osaka Spell it. Seoul. <laughs> sure. O S A K A S A U L. Um, also, from Right Tag, uh, there's a link at the bottom for the team. And on, I'm, I appear in the team page. Um, uh, I'm pretty active on G, Facebook, Twitter, um, even on Skype, I'm Osaka Saul. So, um, love to hear from people with questions about it. They haven't tried it. They had trouble getting in. They didn't get the welcome email. Um, whatever it is, uh, love to hear from people. Um, and just a quick shout out to Anna. I thought Anna was someone else. I didn't know who that was. She just said my uh, name in the chat room, which I didn't really like. Um, hey, Anna, what's up? I know who Anna is. She's cool. Um, Steve, any questions for, um, Sol? Sol, what's your view on, um, the um any other stuff you want to talk about so sorry i'm just run out of stuff to say <laughs> <laughs> um, run out of stuff to say yeah that's really great um, Pat. um a brilliant segue um it, well i want to thank everyone for Hi. great oh. questions J jody um i mean you hit the nail on the head with a couple with, with both your your questions um it, really i think you know we're a bootstrap startup um, and so sometimes people bring up issues. Why doesn't this happen? That, that happen? Um, why can't I just hit a button and pre-approve any of you? Why did you have to come in the way all the little people do? Because we don't have super duper back end controls. Um, it's, we're a small team. We're bootstrapped, which means we're not funded. There's no money behind yeah, it. Yeah, that, that's my next question. It. That was an yeah. question. How are you going to no make money. money out of this? When like you haven't made any money, how do you? Where are you getting all the money from? And that sort of stuff. We're just spending our own. Okay. We believe in this, so <laughs> it's not funded. But as such, we can't do things that would cost. Um, we've got to cut a lot of corners. It also means that things happen very, very slowly. Very slowly. Um, uh, I'll tell you in the future, I hope, I hope this is a hit. If it is, um, for other projects that I want to do, I wouldn't bootstrap them. I'd rather pay people because when you pay people, thing, things get done fast. Okay. Well, I, when everyone's a yeah. partner, um, it's, it's much slower. Are you looking for people yeah. to invest in this or? No. Oh God, no. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we right now, all we're looking to do is prove our concept. Mm -hmm. All we're looking to do is, um, is develop rapport with first users, listen to them, improve the thing bit by bit, take out the lousy, improve the good, you know, add to the good. And then when it's really ready for public launch, we'll launch it. It's not publicly launched. Yeah. It's not open to the public. Right. Um, so when that happens, um, then you get a bunch of raving fans um, and then is the time to go for, and, and also we want to monetize it first, make the thing profitable on our own. When you take an investment, um, money at that point, um, people are coming on board for a whole lot more and taking a whole lot less equity. Yep. When, when you, you haven't proven any of this, um, then they own you for, for very little. So right. it doesn't make sense. So what happens down the track, Nick? Like down the track in the future, like in I don't know, say, a few years and stuff. What happens if Twitter wants to buy it or someone wants to buy it? Would you would you sell it to them? 
Oh, it, it's if anyone, if your grandmother wanted to buy it, it's you know it's a matter of the price is 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 good, yep. but the price wouldn't be good and it shouldn't be good if we haven't proven our concept well, if we're not making money. Yeah, right. People aren't paying, so we need to do that first. Yep. So we're far Definitely. from taking on investment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a great talk. Mark Zuckerberg, are you listening? <laughs> Are you listening, Kevin Rose. Are you listening, I <laughs> Kevin Rose should be on board with this. People do a good job out of this. So it sounds like you're um, waiting to, uh, to it to gain momentum, and you know, hopefully, right. you know, if it does well, then they people start really jumping on board. Yet. Well, yeah, obviously, yeah. It, it, we well, haven't launched it. yet because we want to get feedback, which we're getting. It's trickling in, so things that we can change, we can change, and before we let in the masses. And have a whole lot of massive people find bugs. Right. We'd rather we'd rather have a small group of people um, trying it, and some of them being disappointed, some of them never coming back. Like Google? right, and mm. others, you know. Mm. What sort of feedback so, yeah, had, so, had about it? Um, so, oh, uh, all kinds of uh, experience issues. Right now, uh, as um, um. As one was saying, uh, you have to click on the networks that appear be- on the left side below to get the tags. Yep. For some of them, there are no suggested tags. There simply are none. Well, if there's none, it should say right next to the network, none, so that you don't have to click on it. Because if you're clicking on it and it's a closed door, you're just pulling on a door to find out there's nothing behind it. So this came from one of our, our first right taggers, one of the first users. We call them right taggers. So um, things like this we get from them. Also, we know that people would like to search in different ways, a little bit complex to, com- right. to explain in, in here. Um, uh, but uh, basically user interface issues. Um, okay, uh, so we have to wrap it up, mate. I'm sorry, um, we yeah. do, uh, you know, we haven't got a good time. That's terrific. Time, time That's great. Enjoyed being on the show. Where can they find you on Twitter and thank Facebook? you? And you're on Facebook and Google Plus. Um, go, go sign up, Jody. Where can they find you on Twitter, mate? Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Sun Swept, yeah. and you can find me on uh, Google Plus and the other usual places as either <laughs> Jody Rains or Webmarcom. My my website is webmarcom.net, and obviously you can find me at Tech Webcast. Yes, you can every day, every yes. week. Um, yes. Will you dog? Will you need dog be on Twitter? <laughs> my dog. Um, I you see guess a lot I'm of that. Stuff. I I see a lot of dogs on Twitter. Like making people make their own Twitter accounts for their dogs. I think that's cool. Well, the dog's a lot smarter than some people, so <laughs> maybe he will. <laughs> Absolutely. Steve, um, um, you can find me on Twitter at Bright Eyes and Tech Webcast. Steve, where can they find you, mate? Uh, of course, uh, justin.tv for Linux Cool Dude. Of course, we stream the uh, live version of the Tech Webcast every week. Yep, and this gets re- rebroadcast on uh, Aussie Tech Heads on every Thursday night at 7 p.m. So there's some more um, publication for you, um, So. Mm. Check it out. And we'll certainly spread the word. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Good luck. Thanks for having me. And um, what's your dog's name again, um, Jody? What's that? What's your dog's name again? Oh, Ruger. Oh, Ruger. Hey, Ruger. I hope you enjoyed the podcast, mate. (laughs) Hey, I'm sure he did. He's he's snoozing right right next to me. Where is he? Ruger. He's he's sleeping right next to me. Oh, okay, that's good. I tell you what, if you put him in a video, man, you'll get like. Ten times the amount of views, yeah. and I only had them in yeah. there for like ten yeah. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable! Right? Yeah, but that's your dogs are cute, there, Steve. This is like a big, ferocious-looking dog. So, okay. I don't know. Yeah, it could be I the cuteness. Hi, yeah. Glenn from Aussie Tech Heads. Join Will, Eric, and myself as we bring you the latest, most up-to-date, important tech news that affects you from Australia and the world. A weekly podcast available each Friday through iTunes. Watch the live stream recording of the show at live.thesecrethub.com each Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. or GMT plus 10. Call in live via Skype or chat in our lounge. However you get us, just make sure you do. Listen or visit our website for more information. www.aussietechhead.com.au Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's longest-running tech news podcast and see you next week people